so the way i made decision is i started defining what is sport to me mm. and what does sport give for me sport was just pure joy pure enjoyment yeah. and being happy happiness comes from being fit not just physically but also mm. mentally yeah. then i said can i unlock this through one sport mm. then the answer came yes now so which is this sport mm. which is easier to manage which is less time consuming which requires less money uh, the sport which stood out was running for me because yeah. it less demanding uh, easier to manage even if you are on the move you can go and get your run done we all should erase that fear of failure in life because today if you ask me that's the fear we all uh, sit at because uh, it's also especially because athletes will always get this high by winning that's how athletes are made right because but if you look at life it's not always about winning if you don't win the way we see it is it's failure right yeah. so but that's not how it is so we should kick this fear of failure in our life mm. and enjoy the process yeah. decision was largely triggered by my own personal and the professional front because mm. on the personal front uh, i was taking my family for granted because you're devoting your time to your sport uh, you're devoting your earnings to your sport mm. and at this cost somebody else is suffering so that's one realization mm. second thing uh, as you become matured in your profession your priority changes right. so i had moved away from corporate life i had just stepped into a startup life. I am Bai Kivinki and this is the Working Athlete podcast. Here I talk to working athletes from all walks of life and experts from various sports to provide you with inspiration, training tips, time management and lifestyle advice. If this is something that interests you, please make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any future episodes. Today's guest Nagraj Harsha is a runner and a triathlete who has been in the sport for over a decade. His journey both as a person and as an athlete is pretty inspiring. For me it is a lesson on how one can build a life for oneself through sheer determination and passion despite coming from a very humble background and with very limited resources. In this episode we talked about his running and triathlon journeys over the years. We talked about why he took a step back from triathlons after more than 5 years of living and breathing triathlons. We explored his running journey and how it is helping him find balance to enjoy both work and life outside of work. Now, let us get into my conversation with Nagraj. Welcome to the Working Athlete Podcast, Nagraj. It's a pleasure having you here. Thank you so much, Venki. Lovely meeting you after a very long time. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, when was it? Uh, we started riding together in two thousand ten, eleven. Two thousand eleven, we started riding together. Yeah, man. This is it's long, almost long decade long plus yeah. journey together. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, let's let's get into all that. uh but uh, let's start with uh, you know the question that i always ask people with uh, what is work for you right now uh currently i have taken a break from my work mm-hmm. i'm doing my mba from uh, iim raipur so i've already completed 14 months into the course i'll be graduating by end of this year so i'm trying to explore what's next nice so this is where to... i'm up to going to be an iim grad ah. <laughs> i mean there's something i always aspire to mm. and look forward to i'm happy that it's falling in place at this moment great man i i know uh, the kind of uh, you know struggles you have gone through uh, and from where you have come and from where you have reached it's very very inspiring journey so let us get into all that uh, but let's start with yeah let's start uh, talking about your early life as a kid as uh, you know in school uh, schooling and any sports there how how was your uh, childhood uh, in terms of uh, education and sports 
So I mean I born brought up here in Bangalore so all my life 30 plus years I've lived in Bangalore so that's been pretty interesting so I connect my roots here so I connect my culture here in the city I did my early education in a regional language school called Methodist school so during my uh, childhood I was never an athlete so my priority was education and uh, being with the family so mm. we were a small family of me my mother and my sister mm. i'm a single parent guy mm. so that's my background mm. and uh, all the childhood was extreme poverty mm. so that's something happened uh, uh, which is unfortunate but also blessing in disguise I, I would say that because that teaches lesson as i finished my schooling i went into college so i did my graduation from christ college so that's when uh, life took a different shape altogether. Mm. Uh, I started working to support my mother because she could no longer continue working mm. because of her health issues. She had to take a break. Mm. That means I became a breadwinner of the family. So I had to work between morning uh, 5 o'clock to 10 o'clock in a gym mm. as a gym instructor. Mm. Then go to college at 10 to 4. Again, head back to the gym work between 5 to 10 and come back home, sleep, uh, uh, come back home at around 11 and sleep at 12, mm. get that short sleep and go back to work. So that was my two and a half years while I was at Christ. That, that is interesting, right? You, uh, I know you were, uh, you started with very, very limited resources, uh, you know, with uh, being supported by a single parent and, uh, how did uh, you know ha being forced into uh, uh, becoming a breadwinner right eventually uh, part while studying itself at a very young age how did you get into the uh, you know becoming a gym instructor of all things i mean uh, that's an interesting story first of all uh, there was no force to become a breadwinner mm. because i had to make a choice uh, to see my mother suffering on a bed yeah or uh, ask relatives or friend mm. for help or mm. start looking for a job. When I started looking for a job, I got a job in the gym as not as an instructor, mm. but as a cleaner. Okay. So first one month, all I did was equipment cleaning mm. and observing people, how do they train and how athletes get trained there. Mm. And later, I was under the mentorship of the gym owner who himself was a uh, bodybuilder mm. so he started mentoring me slowly mm. they started handing over one athlete after other athlete mm. and I ended up spending two and a half years of my life while I was studying at the gym right right yeah so that's so how it that you 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 started at the you know lowest rung you you know there and through your curiosity and through the mentorship of the guy there, the owner, you learnt all the, uh, you know, all there is for, yeah. uh, you know, in terms of physical training and become, uh, grow, uh, grown into uh, an instructor. Right. Uh, that's again excellent, right? Thanks, Vicky. Yeah. So, how, wh what are all the things that uh, you learned there during that phase? So, I mean, uh, that is not a traditional uh, job or conventional job anybody would aspire to do. Correct. Especially when you start off as a cleaner. Yeah. So, yeah. first thing I learned is you need to keep away how society perceives you as mm. a person, what society thinks about you, mm. what other person may say about you. These are the things, first and foremost, you need to keep that aside because... It's not easy. For example, I mentioned about being a gym cleaner. Mm. But before even gym cleaner, during my schooling days, I have worked in Pan Bida shop, Rolling Bida. Mm. So then I have worked in a car service station, mm. servicing the car. Right. Then I have worked in a Xerox shop, taking Xerox copy. Right. This was typically during my summer vacation, just to get that mm. uh, small bit of money during my vacation. Right. So, first thing I realized there, there's no shy in doing any kind of job. Whether you're a servant in the hotel or the hotel owner, mm. you both are equal, actually. Yeah. So, yeah. you're servicing the customers. Yeah. So, that is one of the important les lessons I learned. And when you do this or practice this, 
you'll start valuing what is empathy in life mm. uh then you will start having certain integrity in life mm. you'll start taking certain stands in life mm. and in the whole scenario you'll have your own circle then you'll earn that respect yeah. and you at some level you are inspiring other person there's mm. always someone who will be looking at you yeah. or getting inspired from you so these yeah. are the things which really made me realize probably i didn't realize back in days mm. but if i look back maybe that has changed my life definitely yeah the so the dignity of labor is one thing but all these uh, experiences that you had from your childhood uh, would have meant so much in terms of how to uh, interact with other people how to respect and gain respect and trust uh, through the years right so yeah. th- that that def- definitely kind of uh, shows in the way you have evolved as a person over the years awesome so let us um, dig a little bit into that right the education aspect of it so how were you able to uh, support your education because you, uh, you know, obviously although your mother uh, was working to support you and uh, but typically the and you were doing uh, part time you know whenever you can uh, but was it enough for uh, supporting your education throughout how, how was that so if you look at uh, my mother's earning her first job into her first year she was earning only 200 rupees per month this mm-hmm. was in early 90s right then when she left her job that was probably in 2007 so her last run salary was 5000 rupees mm-hmm. imagine in 2007 running a family of two kids mm-hmm. taking care of their education and household expenses paying rent because we never owned house in bangalore mm-hmm. it's never easy mm-hmm. because uh, uh 5000 in 2000 uh, 2007 is meant nothing it's Correct. peanut right yeah. so fortunately uh, all my education since uh my schooling days to my graduation was taken care by a uh, institution called compassion international so this is a international body mm-hmm. which recognizes people or kids under poverty mm-hmm. and hand pick them and support them financially not just financially but also their education their family members till the time the kid turns 18 years mm. and after that the the kid is on their own mm. so that happened in my case wherein my sister wasn't lucky enough to get that mm. so that means my mother portion of her earning would go towards my sister's education mm. and uh, my education is any which ways is taken care of mm. so that's one aspect to it second aspect if you look at my schooling days we went to a normal uh, government not government i would say it's a private run school but where uh, people uh, or kids with poverty would come and study there mm. so that means example uh, when i uh, did my 10th standard my fees was only 190 rupees per year that's mm. it mm. that would cover entire examination expenses the books everything else mm. so rest of the expenses are covered by my sponsors for example uh, my daily meal uniform books etc was all funded by foreign institute mm. so that means it was fairly easy easier to manage uh, the education expenses however on the life side mm. uh, the way we spent our childhood is i remember we could afford only one time meal which we would get it from uh, government run provision store mm. having a ration card in hand right. so many a time we would skip our breakfast or dinner uh, depending on uh, what meal we could afford on that particular day right. so uh, at least when my mother gets her paycheck the first one week we would eat two three meals mm. very comfortably mm. from there we will start cutting corners sure. so i would fairly say that it's a little bit of compromised life mm. but having said that i think that life meant a lot to me definitely and yeah, definitely but you know coming from that uh, that stage to where you are now i through the years from from the uh, time that i've known you uh, i've always uh, you know seen you with a smile 
never giving an Im- any other impression never uh, you know uh, throwing tantrums or anything like that but you know with com- with a smile with compassion for others and uh, you know that uh, can do at- attitude towards anything that you have taken up so that uh, you know obviously comes from that having gone through a lot of uh, uh, situations that demand your uh, you being you know forthright and uh, you know ingenious to kind of uh, deal with different difficult situations absolutely yeah yeah so uh, coming to you, you know that was your education and uh, this thing right and then uh you after what happened after the uh, graduation the christ college you said the working as a gym instructor uh and then the, after education what was the next so after education i was a uh, campus placed uh, in an organization called uh, usha international mm. as a finance officer right so i mean that was my very first job so i had to relocate to uh delhi for my job placement that's where my first job posting was so i spent about 4 uh, to 5 months in delhi so i mean uh, while i was there i traveled across a uh, different state of uh, north india so uh, right from i i had to go through a uh, training process uh, example so i had to do a sales job i had to do a finance job operations job to get a experience then later i requested them to post uh, me in bangalore Uh, mm-hmm. for the reason that i had to i wanted to spend time with my family i couldn't leave my mother and uh, sister alone here right. so i came back to bangalore till then my mother and sister were on their own mm-hmm. once i came back to bangalore so that's where a real work started happening meaning you are into job you're no more a student mm. so you know what it means right student yeah. life is different <laughs> golden life yeah. but once you start working life changes your right. perspective changes uh the way you take step changes so so all that i uh, slowly the reality is striking in mm. you're missing your childhood and your student life mm. second thing is you're more responsible you're adult and grown up mm. uh that means invariably you'll working up more and more so suddenly that puts you into a shell the shell for me was my life was limited within the four walls of corporate mm. so after 6 months it started becoming more and more monotonous mm. then you start exploring what excites you mm. you'll try to socialize with your friend you'll try to uh, for example for me socializing socializing was going with friends to pubs and different places and trying different things mm. that really didn't excite me as much as i expected because in a moment i would get bored mm. then i would say what's next mm. then i came up with a post someone saying that hey we are going for trekking mm. so i said let's try this so that trekking is was organized by uh by a trekking club called chennai trekkers we all know uh, right. peters group right yeah, yeah. so it was organized by them it's called going nowhere mm. that means they did not disclose what the destination is what the distance is how many people are going to be in that trek all they said is assemble in this point so we will board the bus and we are not disclosing the destination even the tickets were bought uh, in a very secretive manner <laughs> so we landed up in a place closer to chikpalapur so it's a uh, there's a resort called R- roti kallu resort mm. and it was 3 days of trekking so meaning first day would be rest day and next two days is rigorous, rigorous trekking So there i realize it's just not normal trekking for beginners it's most advanced that's what i had signed up mm. unknowingly <laughs> so till then i always been inactive guys so the trekking we had about 44 kilometers in two days uh not just walking on a plain trails but crossing the rivers climbing the mountains ascending and descending it was superb actually yeah. so that gave me a realization that after the trek that this is what i love mm. what is it it's a physical activity it's the endorphin that my body releases through exercise that exercise is nothing but being outdoor meeting people so that gave me a good realization 
fast forward after I uh, came back with trekking, I met few people in the trek who are runners. They said, why don't you try running? Mm. That'll keep you happy. That'll mm. keep you fit. Mm. It'll also motivate you to lose weight for the reason that I was on a little bit of heavier side. So I wanted to lose weight. Mm. So I started running. So that kept my focus into my job. Mm. So that's my initial journey of uh, transition from student to corporate. Right, right, right. Yeah, that is interesting, right? Once you uh, start working and start earning and that from student life to corporate life you try to kind of explore uh, things maybe pubs or whatever but then you, you they luckily you chanced upon this and everything flipped right absolutely so, but interesting uh, point that you talked about is you were uh, heavy uh, on the heavier side how how much was that i was almost hitting 70 in my early 20s that mm-hmm. when I was 21 I was getting closer to 70s mm-hmm. so wherein during my student life I, I'm always in 60s mm. that means I had put on 10 kilos okay in a shortest duration that means you'll start feeling uncomfortable you no longer carry your body weight yeah. you can't breathe normally the way human beings supposed to breathe you'll feel more lethargic more lazy uh, you lose focus Right. So these are the behavioral changes mm. I started noticing while I started working in corporate. Right, right. So from then on, uh, how did it progress? You uh, came back from the track and someone suggested running. So how did that progress from there? So I, uh, for me, running was something to keep myself active mm. or on a day-to-day basis. Mm. So I started running thrice a week. So initial journey was starting off with five kilometer run. I would wake up whether I, I didn't have any friends to go for running. I would just simply wake up, go to Lalba, do quick five kilometer and come back home. And I kept doing the same thing over again and again. So while I was doing that, I wanted to progress from one distance to another distance. I started chasing that distance. Mm. For me, after I did five kilometer comfortably, I wanted to go to 10K. And this is not chasing races, but also my own goal. Mm. Because when I did my first 5K uh, while I was at corporate, I had not done any sports formally. Uh, I barely did any sports in school also, Mm. college as well. College, only one incident where I remember I was being challenged my friend to do a 5K run on a track. This was on athletics day. Mm. So I was the last one to finish. I, mm. It took me about 30 minutes to complete that 5K. Mm. And I was dead after that. Versus the first guy who finished 5K in 18 minutes. Mm. That was a difference. So yeah. they had to literally chase me off the track to prepare the track for ne- next, next event. event. Yeah. Right? So yeah. that happened. Yeah. Then from there uh, to when I started pursuing sports as passion, I had mm. to start focusing on the progression. So progression also comes from Mm. being consistent at it, Mm. uh, being very goal-oriented and uh, focused person. Mm. Uh, That's something I lack. I'll speak about it later. Mm. So, But I feel the consistency, focus, discipline comes once you have some kind of race in place. Mm. Then I started picking races. For me, very first race was TCS 10K in Bangalore. Okay. So this was in 2011. Mm. So I picked that race. I started training for it. How many uh, months after uh, you started running was this? So this was, I mean, from trekking to running, all of that, I had good six to eight months of practice. Right. Yeah, good Not progress. that I had a very formal approach towards mm. training or formal understanding towards training, mm. but the intention was to complete 10K comfortably. Correct. So that would give me... A satisfaction of achieving my own personal goal yeah so that's how my running started eventually but as i kept running and running i kept meeting new people new people would uh, share their desire their goal their journey and you get uh, inspired then i picked up cycling from cycling to triathlon <laughs> right 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 very interesting so uh, that 10k that you signed up uh, the first 10K, TCS 10K. Uh, how did that go? 
So that training was superb. Uh, if I have to talk about that story, the 10K story, the previous night, mm. I had one full grilled chicken. <laughs> okay. My stomach was heavy. Yeah. That obviously didn't get digested. Yeah. Just because somebody told eat heavy food previous day so that you can run comfortably. Yeah. But that had different effect on me. So I could... They, uh, they should have mentioned carbs. Absolutely. I mean, uh, those days, uh, understanding of all these things is limited, right? So... Right. Uh, it has its own challenges. So coming to this, it was not comfortable. I had a stitch on my stomach. Mm. So I, I had to literally hold my stomach and run uh, throughout the run. Mm. And Bangalore weather is obviously favorable weather. So I had no complaints towards weather. Mm. Terrain is fairly, fairly rolling terrain and it's pretty easier to manage. I could manage. So at the end, I completed in about 58 or 59 minutes 10K. Nice. That's for first uh, 10K. Right. Yeah, sub sub hour already. Yeah. Okay. Oh, <laughs> nice, nice. So uh, uh, I have to ask uh, right away, what is your uh, PB now for 10K? 10K, my PB is in 38 minutes. I think it's uh, 38.20, hmm. if I'm not wrong. Yeah, yeah. So in a training run, I have done about 37.50. Mm-hmm. So, but official PB is 38.20. Nice, nice. Yeah, that's like uh, a good 20 minutes shaved off from your first 10K, <laughs> yeah. right? Awesome, awesome. Uh, you you have done a lot more things, uh, you know, from then on. Um, like uh, after, uh, after that 10K, but how did you get into cycling? Uh, cycling, again, uh, it was... Uh, it was an exploratory journey. Mm. The way I got into trekking, very similar way, I got into cycling. Mm. So there was a group of people who organized cycling trip. So that time when they organized cycling trip, I had no cycle. Mm. So my previously owned cycle was gifted by me, my gym training. Mm. So I used that cycle for my college commute. Mm. And I used that cycle for one of my Nandi ride where I got mucked. Then I had to come back and return the cycle back and say that I'm not going to do this. Uh, this was on airport, so I'll save that story for uh, next bit. Yeah. So coming to cycling is uh, uh, the the formal cycling journey started through this exploratory ride. It was organized by Bangalore Ax- Accenders. Mm. So Rajesh Nayak, you might be knowing him. So he organized this trip. Who? Rajesh Nayak. Ah, 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 yes. So he organized this trip. This trip was about... Uh, Riding to uh, Valpare, Munnar and back. So it was about 200 kilometers ride mm. uh, in uh, three days. So that's how it was designed. And in that ride, we had to climb from Polachi to Valpare, which is a climb. And from uh, Valpare to Adiropalli the Falls, which is route. Climb, yeah. And that time, uh, there was no road at all. So mm. that means it was off-road uh, route. Mm. So that was uh, the ride I opted for. So I went and shopped my cycle on my credit card. <laughs> so I thought, let me do it on my own bike then, borrowing uh, somebody else's bike. I think that was a good choice I made because at uh, the moment you have a bike, you'll start thinking different mm. and your aspiration changes your, and you want to do uh, sports differently. So mm. that that's how I looked at it. Yeah. So basically, you invested in something. Absolutely. And you want to get more out of more it, out of right? it. That's the right investment, way to say. right? Yeah. So you you have committed to it. Correct. And then you want to say, okay, and how I bought the bike? Correct. What do I do now with it? <laughs> Correct. Okay. I, I need to do more trips after this. So that's how it went, I guess. Yeah. So, so that trip was superb for me. I came back. So what, that what, changed me as a person. What bike was this? That was Cannondale bike. So I yeah, the blue one that yeah. I uh, the, uh, that uh, we used to ride with. Yeah. yeah. yeah In yeah. fact, I went on uh, changing my name as well on Facebook, saying like Nagraj Cannondale Arsha. <laughs> <laughs> so I added that bike name to my middle name. So that was that was pretty. I mean, funny. Yeah. I would say. Yeah. But I mean, look at it. It uh, it changes your mind, and correct, uh, correct. Uh, like you said, you want to get most out of it right yeah, yeah. just not limited to riding a bike but also uh, creating identity for yourself right mm-hmm. so that that was pretty interesting and mm-hmm. i kept on riding again and again so i would wait for my weekend to come in for me weekend is only sunday mm-hmm. monday to saturday i would work mm-hmm. i would do that long ride 
and started meeting new people mm. so the more i meet new people i get inspired i get to learn new thing i want to try new thing right so from there i transitioned towards triathlon mm. mm-hmm. yeah so uh, you would about to talk about that trip that you uh, did uh, let's talk uh, how did that go that was superb uh, first day was insane it was all about climbing mm. i have not climbed i'm not trained prior to that the only uh, bike ride i had done was that nandi ride which i told you hmm. so which i started at uh, 3 or 2 am in the morning hmm. so i uh, hit hebal uh, flyover at about uh, 4 o'clock or 4:30 in the morning i got marked but i didn't return hmm. so i proceeded i did my climb what happened what um, um, by mugging you mean what what, what uh, happened there Is so there... those days we had uh, uh, airport was not existent so right. that was isolated area hmm. and pretty dark in the hmm. night hmm. uh starting a ride in the, the middle of the night airport flyovers were not there yes correct even airport was not there in uh, 2010 uh, uh, right so hmm. a uh, pretty isolated area dark in the night uh, it's also it was also my mistake to start right in the middle of the night mm. because probably obviously nobody would guide you mm. when to start what to do because it was my first ride so i got inspired reading few blogs where dipankar would ride and few other folks would go for night ride in bangalore mm. so that's what people would do back in days mm. not anymore i believe but there are few people who would still do it mm. so i opted for night start and i got mugged uh a couple of guys came in the bike uh so they opened their knife one kept a knife near my neck another one held it near my stomach i couldn't move so when they mugged me they got only 100 rupees in their oh, hand obviously. because that's the only money i was carrying <laughs> yeah. and i had 500 rupees black and white phone sony phone so they took that away and they returned the sim to me so that means uh, my wa- my pockets were empty but the desire in heart was to go and complete the fire to complete nandi was in me i went on i climbed nandi in about 47 minutes with two breaks so while i descended i i mean the climb i feel it bursted my itb also because that's my first ride mm. i came back to home that was afternoon or evening next day so so i took multiple uh, breaks on the way back especially because the Mm. the fatigue killed me sleeplessness killed me and uh, having no money or uh, that having no money means you can't eat you can't eat you anything you can't eat anything i survived on water all throughout uh, so oh i had my to God. <laughs> uh, ask people on the road to give me lift where people rejected but i said i am not going to give up because you have so, a bike yeah, with you i will Cycle still ride you. and finish uh. so i finished i got that Uh, I mean, high after completion, I would probably never forget this incident throughout my life. It almost took me about twelve plus hours to complete hundred kilometers, my first hundred kilometers. Yeah. So that so includes st- Nandi climb and mm. come back. You started at two in the night, yeah. two, and then you got mugged. Yeah. I you it didn't matter that uh, they took away your phone, your money, and, yeah. and you have nothing left to eat or anything. You just kept going, and with empty stomach, you complete. You spent twelve insane hours yeah. to complete what one twenty one thirty kilometers, uh, including Nandi climb. Man. That was on my Firefox bike, <laughs> which was gifted my gym trainee. Right, right. That's. But I think that made me mentally tougher. So mm-hmm. that helped me to do my first ride after one year mm. with my Cannondale bike, the one I mentioned that we did uh, Polachi, mm. uh, Walpare, Adirapalli, and Kochi. Mm. So I think I could uh, endure the distance. I could endure the climb. and we had a great company you have great company yeah. you actually have food to eat <laughs> and a scenic route uh, right. too and food is something i mean <laughs> uh, we would ride only for food <laughs> so every person in that group were, i mean we all were foodies we yeah. would just take break and continue to eat probably would have consume more calorie than we burnt that's so, a, that, that's true for almost every tour i think yeah we we eat so much and all the in all the places that we go it's we are never going to burn yeah. that much but Absolutely. it's all fun 
once yeah. we came back and i think uh, the same group we would get together on the weekend and do that quick 100k or 150k ride on the mountain bike mm. so that kept us going for couple of years nice 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 so uh, you know running happened uh, first trekking happened and then through some uh, you know uh, through that running happened and then through you know a chance cycling happened so you decided to put cycling and running together and you know start triathlon happened yeah. how did that triathlon thing come up so again uh, that was uh, through inspiration so i read a blog mm. where uh, uh, that blog was written by dipankar again mm. so his first, first crazy uh, iron man I- iron yeah. man so while he did his first iron man also i would accompany him in a swim session and run session biking obviously nobody can match him mm. back in days or even now so mm. people would <laughs> <laughs> draw yeah. line before they start riding anyway so yeah. so he gave me a gist of how the triathlon sport looks like mm. in real so he would narrate his story in person and uh, uh, that his first uh, iron man journey was also iron man nice mm. so that in a way inspired me and apart from him i since childhood i've been reading about this sports uh in newspaper very few regional newspaper would cover about this sport right so that means it's a excitement for me because if you look at india as a country people would either be doing cricket or very small population would be following football that's it no other sports would get coverage mm. or attention right so whenever there is different sport in the media it would quickly catch my eyeball with that mm. uh triathlon was one such sport which which had my eyeball since my younger days i only learned what it is in real the moment i started interacting with people right. so the interaction also through dipanka mm. so then i said uh, okay i know uh, running now i have done it mm. i know cycling now i have done it swimming probably i can learn right so that put fire into me saying that let's try this now <laughs> So this was in uh, uh, late 2011 mm. so in october mm. so i went ahead without thinking twice without having a road bike without knowing swimming i went and signed up for ironman 70.3 colombo mm, that and too. i had 4 months to train for it okay ironman uh, 70.3 colombo was scheduled for 2012 march or something 2012 feb 2012 feb yeah. so you you signed up for it you know with four day uh, four months uh, uh, notice uh, without even owning a bike for yourself yeah meaning uh, no road bike no road bike yeah right right so how did that preparation for that and you know that event itself how did that go so if i have to build an analogy to it it's like a common man going and buying house which he cannot afford and once you buy it your your ass is on fire <laughs> so you have to work towards clearing that loan yeah. meaning you have to become disciplined first yeah and you'll strive hard to uh, keep paying that dues month after month mm. for me in my case it was same i opted for something which is unknown to me unexplored Uh, and expensive for me mm. so but there's a desire to uh, or aspiration to do that sport right so that uh, kept me going so i went and bought the road bike mm. so my first road bike was bianchi so mm. a nairon 7 i still remember the model right so i paid about 27000 to that bike mm. so i trained on the bike without any cleats so so i mean uh, i could complete my iron man using the same bike Mm-hmm. so my shoes were borrowed from my friends that's my running shoes then swimming is something i learned in shortest duration because i was never a swimmer in my childhood mm. or never learned to swim swimming in childhood meaning this sport uh help me to learn this new sport which is swimming right. so the way i did that is i put plan in place i had full time job i had couple of hours in a day where i can do one or two sport for me i would just pick one sport at a time in a day 
and practice it. Mm. Meaning morning, on one of the day I would go for a run. Uh, in the evening I would go for a swim. So that was in a public pool. Then riding is always on the weekend. That's only on Sunday. Mm. So I thought this could help me. And when I started doing that, there were uh, there was no formal uh, coaching or there were no coaches also in the country. So what I would do is I would simply log into internet and start reading the blog, mm. which is written by Westerners or few Europeans or Australians, mm. and pick uh, knowledge from there and start implementing on your own. Right. That means it's simple trial and error mm. and keep learning through the process. Right. And there's also a little bit of customization, which is to Indian environment or culture. Correct. That means uh, you'll mm-hmm. customize your training according to the infrastructure you have it here. Mm-hmm. You'll customize your diet according to your body type and food habits here. Mm-hmm. So that's something I learned through reading. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, with, with a desire to read and learn, self-learning, right. I would call it. Yeah. And kept practicing. So uh, the beauty about more and more you practice, you'll start learning. Correct. And you'll start believing it, it's going to happen. Mm. Yeah. So, but, you know, it's all uh, new, you know, one new sport, two sports that you have learned newly, but you know how to do it. So, uh, and a lot of uh, knowledge from the internet to kind of, you know, build your own training plan, or when to do what and all that, Right. And you landed up at the start line of the Colombo 70.3. So how was that experience? I mean, starting, uh, I remember uh, we traveled to Colombo in a group of, uh, with, with a group of friends. So mm-hmm. my friends were kind enough to accompany me during the journey and with the plan that we would do a road trip across Sri Lanka after my Ironman journey. Nice. So in that sport also, uh, there were four Indians uh, apart from me. Hmm. So then that means you can imagine total Ironman athletes or triathletes in the country were less than 10 people in 2012. Hmm. So uh, there were four other people. Uh, it was good to meet Sunil Menon, Amit Samar, and a couple of other guys at the start line. So that's where our friendship started with them. Uh, yeah, yeah. Then, I remember those yeah. uh, early years of, uh, you know, these yeah. uh, these guys were the first few guys who were doing the Ironman or, uh, you know, half iron distance uh, races outside. Uh, you know, the first one I know is uh, uh, Dipankar, of course. Yes. Uh, and, uh, at, fr- you know, by that time, there is that... Uh, um, f- uh, the lady from Chennai who already done a few uh, I know I did not I, I know I did not and um, yeah and then we know Dipankar personally and then uh, from my Hyderabad days I knew uh, Sunil and uh, Amit uh, they were training for uh, Ironman and th- these were the guys that a very handful of people yes. who were there in triathlon the sport itself was through inspiration from reading uh, experiences from outside and p- individuals getting inspired and you know starting right. uh, starting something right and then uh, they uh, seeing them doing you know, p- people like you getting inspired and doing more and yeah. pe- more and more people get to see yes. all of you doing and then that's a beautiful evolution that has happened over the years yeah but in yeah continue with yeah i mean the uh, speaking about the start line experience mm-hmm. i mean butterflies in my stomach so a lot of excitement where you meet hundreds and thousands of people from different continent and countries so that brings in altogether different level of energy so so i mean uh, that 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 was about the race so mm-hmm. for me the swim was most challenging part in the race I took about one hour, one minute to get out of water, wherein the cutoff was one hour, five minutes. Mm. So I was the last but the one to get out of water. Okay. Then cycling was fairly manageable for me. I would not say easy mm. because uh, I took about three and a half hours to complete the 90 kilometer. Uh, mm. Three hour, 20 minutes to be precise. Right. 90 kilometer, that mm. means 
I was Pretty okay decent. with it. Yeah. And uh, the most I enjoyed is running after swimming and uh, cycling. Uh, reason being, I took about uh, two or twenty minutes to do half marathon. Mm -hmm. So that puts the entire race completion time to six hour thirty seven minutes. So what I enjoyed the most in running is that gave me a different high because I have never run half marathon in my life. So I did official half marathon in an Ironman seventy point three. Mm. So that's one way to look at it. The suffer you go through after enduring two different sports. Mm. especially in running because before running you've done cycling and swimming, swimming and, cycling. and yeah. you have endured that pain because right. uh, physically body shuts but mentally you don't give up yeah nearly 4 hours already spent there yeah and you keep yourself busy when you're keeping yourself busy while running your mind is struck by zillions of thoughts mm. but a fellow athlete who is right next to you who's running will motivate you so i had a great company on the run so i would just simply uh, kept running kept running and i would promise that i am not going to walk in running mm -hmm. because this <laughs> walking is not in it yeah. so i could manage running all throughout uh, the finish line gave me a different high mm. uh, different energy because i was not tired at the finish line but uh, i was happy yeah. i was more energetic That's high on adrenaline correct, correct right yeah. and the moment you, i crossed the finish line i made a promise myself that i am going to do full iron man hmm. my first yeah. goal was to do full you, iron you man you were hooked yeah yeah first my first goal was to do full iron man but mm. i was somewhere not confident yeah. that i could do it because right. i don't know swimming i don't know running mm. uh and cycling so right. uh, let me try if i can complete it i had a time goal of completion also that means if i complete it within 7 hours mm. i'm going to do full iron man otherwise i'm going to stick half stick to half iron man right so right. then at the finish line i made a promise that i'm going to do it after the race all of us uh, went on uh, exploring sri lanka mm -hmm. so i mean that was fantastic Excellent. that is something i kept doing after every iron man for me iron man is nothing but go race after race explore the country right right yeah that's a beautiful way to uh, see different uh, countries right yeah. see different places uh, first you get there uh, the destination you pick based on the event that you want to do yeah and then uh, you know explore the place once you get there once you you know achieve your uh, goal goal event and that is something that uh, i am guessing also uh, got inspired by dipankar uh, in a way because he he's he's in a different uh, league right he uh, just goes on uh, you know bike packing after the event yeah. <laughs> so he has done crazy uh, he has, has done, after almost every ironman he would go on the bike Ba you know like bike packing and uh, through the uh, uh, alps and everything so but uh, what kind of exploration you guys did uh, in terms of uh, the sri lanka was more of a, a road trip and si similar uh, things after uh, uh, ad with other events as well yeah absolutely so mm -hmm. sri lanka we did about 5 uh, days of road trip covering whole of sri lanka uh, uh, on a bus and train so that was fantastic uh, then uh, after sri lanka i did full iron man in switzerland mm. so that was uh, zurich place. iron man in 2013 mm. then 2014 i did iron man uh, louisville uh, then 2015 i did uh, iron man lake tahoe mm -hmm. 2016 i did iron man uh, kalmar so uh, wow. so uh, in every race uh, i would go with a goal uh, the goal of completing within a uh, time which i aim for right enjoy the process of finishing after finishing explore the country and come back right so that process remains same till the time i remain with the sport nice nice yeah so from 2013 through 2016 you have done what uh, each year for yeah. iron man um so tell tell me how did it that experience of ironman training and racing 
change over f- from your first to your last uh so the for me the primary change is i i would break it down a hmm. uh, one is change in terms of goal right right so goal here is uh, complete it in x number of hours hmm. that means you want to while your goal changes it's just not time but also your priorities hmm. meaning you want to get faster you want to do better right. and you want to unlock the achievement so that's second achievement comes for me achievement was losing weight and getting fatter mm. and getting faster that happened so that's second level and the third one is learning new things so as you keep uh, achieving goal and unlocking uh, the achievements you're learning new things because without learning you can't achieve the first two things what i mentioned right? right so the learning kept on going actually and mm. that learning application also i could apply in my real life or in my job because mm. you pick something you implement you execute uh, you achieve the result and that process is same in life also whatever we do or in professional uh, front as well right mm. so learning was something uh, then uh, fourth one is uh exploration for me exploration is just not defined in terms of seeing the country but also getting exposed to the culture getting exposed to food meeting new people because new people will teach you new thing right right so that's about uh, the exploration part mm. and the last bit is there's always a perspective mm. because every time you try to do everything that i mentioned it changes you as a person it gives you new perspective in your life mm-hmm. so that means there's always there's something to look forward to in your journey right. so these are the few key things which i learned through the sport mm. so again that was through consistent approach because this won't be able to achieve without consistency right so let's pick on a couple of threads from there right sure. so uh, how how much uh, did the timing goal change from first to the last and how much did you achieve uh, how much of that did you achieve and then how much how did the perspective change from your first to the last so first ironman i did in about 13 hours 17 minutes right to the last one i did in 11 hours 17 minutes mm. so i improved about 2 hours yeah so uh if i break it down uh, my first full ironman swim was in about 1 hour 50 minutes uh, that's 3.8 km in 1 hour 50 minutes versus my fastest swim is 1 hour 18 minutes mm. there's a improvement in one sport mm. and uh first full ironman i did biking leg in about 6 and a half hours for 180 km versus the fastest one is uh five and a half hours there's yeah. a improvement there awesome then uh, first time when i did full marathon in an ironman is about four and a half hours versus the fastest one i have done is three or 50 minutes mm. so that's where meaning it's just not achieving overall goal but also there should be micro goals uh, or segmental goals within the right. sport actually that's uh, after all you are dealing with three correct sports i yeah. mean triathlon itself is one sport but it, you have three components through that sport right Correct. so individual improvement of each of those components also brings up that uh, overall okay right. that's yeah. one mm. if you look at another pocket to it there are challenges right uh, which is attributed to this sport mm. because each sport is different each sport execution is different and that exe- execution has uh, variables like terrain country weather condition etc mm. so that means you have to start tackling the challenges mm. uh, example uh, for me swimming is always a challenge because i'm not a great swimmer uh, i lack the technique uh, freestyle is challenge and this challenge is different in uh, ocean versus lake mm. versus river so that means you have to keep picking from your past learning and do it differently in different condition okay so that was uh that, that was something about i call it as challenge handling same right. thing applies to bike also a uh, biking on flat terrain is different versus biking on a hilly terrain so 
again goes to marathon uh, running a marathon in colder condition is different versus running a marathon in uh, hot condition hot conditions and yeah and running a marathon on uh, flat terrain is different versus running a marathon on rolling or hill terrain right so i have gone through all this challenge thing so when mm. this challenge comes on your way mm. you don't escape you face it right so same thing applies in life as well when mm. life throws challenge you face it you don't run away from it exactly and we all will struggle at some level because at the end of the day we are human being we are exposed to convenience in life yeah. so you get that temptation to find a convenient way mm. uh, in any manner right but uh, i would always look at from facing it yeah. but at times i falter it to mm-hmm. right uh, yeah so man, you, you if if you don't falter you you become an automaton right you, right. you become a robot not yeah. not human <laughs> <laughs> so there is the at, at times you just spring up from your bed and ready to roll but right. at the, at times you would be like oh no today <laughs> you will you know so probably Correct. switch off the alarm uh, two three times before you snooze the alarm two three times before you you know reluctantly get out of the bed yeah. you know so that's that's always there yeah so apart from challenge to other uh, variables to handle is one is time and resource management mm. that's always we all struggle uh, not just in india but also athletes across the world especially uh, people who do triathlon or ironman or amateur athletes largely except the professional athlete because if you look at uh, the nature of these athletes we all are working uh professionals right we all would have families to manage yeah that means uh we are exposed to limited resources be it financially or whatever manner so you will try to squeeze in everything that you have around you right from time to money to resource yeah you will learn effective u- utilization hmm. so the same principle applies when it comes to your profession or life also you will try yeah. to manage your life or profession within your available resources yeah. without stretching further you know your limits correct correct this is another thing i learned through the sport hmm. uh i mean th- these are the things yeah yeah definitely and uh, the way like you know the triathlon is an expensive sport yeah. like you know we have to think about uh, our bank balance too yeah. <laughs> right <laughs> so what uh, these are the resources that uh, are available in terms of money this is the these are the resources that i have available in terms of time right yeah uh, uh, times per uh, sport the time for uh, work time for family so out of this uh, with these resources how best can i yeah. utilize and make the best out of it absolutely there is always that fight maximization maximization <laughs> right yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 but the beauty about it uh, when you try to maximize it mm. the result is always sat- satisfactory irrespective mm. of whatever it is mm. example for some person a result could be a uh, getting that 8 hours finish in ironman mm. or let's say sub 3 hour marathon in marathon race mm. that gives that person will be getting some kind of high through that right wherein the person who finishes in 16 hours ironman or doing 6 hours marathon will be getting a similar high actually. right yeah. the way if you look at this one so mm. i think that's where uh ultimate satisfaction or pleasure lies yeah. because at the end of the day uh, if you look at human psyche is we should be happy in the place where we are mm. obviously the result will be improvised with yeah. consistent effort yeah uh, uh making conscious effort to improve right right definitely definitely so from 2013 to 2016 you spent uh, your uh, sporting life around triathlon yeah then you kind of moved away from triathlon was it a conscious decision and why so it was a conscious uh, decision uh, before i made that decision to take a step back and stop doing triathlon also I had to take advice from multiple people so i mean and also it wasn't easy decision to make because mm. uh it's very tough to leave thing because it has become a part of your identity yeah. a, at that point right from 
four or five years you have been obsessing over these uh, events and you know doing uh, sport yeah. uh, and uh, i think one uh, at one point i remember um, uh, you know from nagraj canandale harsha it became nagraj iron man harsha yeah. right yeah. so th- it has become a part of your identity in a way so it i am sure it is not a, it was not an easy decision but what was the uh, things that you went through so i mean the decision was largely triggered by uh, my own personal and the professional front because mm. on the personal front uh, i was taking my family for granted because you are devoting your time to your sport uh, you are devoting your earnings to your sport mm. and at this cost somebody else is suffering so that's one realization mm. second thing uh, as you become matured in your profession your priority changes right. so i had moved away from corporate life i had just stepped into a startup life a mm. uh, life at startup is far more different versus corporate life meaning i was really passionate about building brand fast snap right uh, i was fully involved i had a great team there mm. uh, great leaders there yeah so you yeah. Uh, from usha international where we, your first job you moved to fast snap no before it? that i was working in toyota for about 3 and a half years oh, okay, so okay. i gave so up that... toyota job all right then okay. i transited towards fast snap fast snap right. uh, happened in 2016 mm-hmm. so up until then i was still doing i mean even in fast snap job also i was doing triathlon mm-hmm. i continued till 2017 okay but as i was continuing the struggle was becoming more and more because right. on the personal front family demands your time mm. resources yeah on profession time your job uh, requires more time for me at job my job was on uh, a moving job meaning uh, every day you are in different city mm. and constantly on the move meeting different people that means it's different lifestyle yeah. different food uh, not having an access to uh, the resources for pursuing your sport right so when no, it, it's it's uh, you know it, it kind of makes sense for me right it yeah. uh, you if, you go through different stages of life yeah right and at each stage of life you have to uh, reassess and uh, assess what are your priorities yeah. at that point of time and there is also this guilt of are you actually you know uh, like you mentioned uh, diverting all your resources and energies towards uh, the sport and uh, kind of neglecting uh, the resources that you know re- neglecting family and the resources that you could provide them uh, uh, be it you know th- yeah, economically or through th- the time you spend with them yeah. all this would bear you know have a bearing on your psyche right yeah. it it has that guilt might be there underlying at one point yeah. but it will build up pile up pile up pile up until we said okay what it explodes heck? one day correct and you know like that along with the um, the demands of a startup life and the, that yeah. you are really passionate about not just something that you know that you are working for a, 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 some other corporate that you are uh, you you okay doing well in the job but not as passionate as yeah. you know something that uh, is connected to sport that you love and you want to build that brand yeah. right so th- i think these two kind of converge together yeah uh, yeah you so just to add it up a few mm. more points here is what yeah. happened in my one is job kept busy that means i'm happy at job yeah i'm maximizing my results at job hmm. people have been backing me at the job right. there's no reason to complain yeah yeah uh, so uh me as a person also i want to excel in things which i'm doing hmm. meaning in life or profession or in sport right so sports was taking highest priority at that point of time hmm. uh meaning i have to devote my time there and i want to get better right but when things change i'm not able to give time to my sport mm. uh somewhere that started impacting me uh 
on my psychology. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. psychologically, I was getting impacted. Right. Meaning, if I would uh, spend time with my family, there is fear of missing out on my sport. Mm-hmm. If I start uh, living in that fear, that means I would constantly be thinking my performance is going down. Right. I won't be able to achieve my goal of next Ironman. Yeah. Uh, and that just shuts me down as a person who I am. Right. And puts me into negative thought. Mm. So is in the case of job. If I travel on job, I'm not swimming tomorrow. Mm. So I may not be cycling tomorrow. This might have a detrimental effect on my uh, a sport. Right. If I don't do sports, I if I don't achieve my uh, goal in sports, I might lose my identity. You spoke about right. uh, identity, uh, creating your own identity with your sport, right? right. So all these fears started playing game in mind. Hmm. So that's one. So then I got into deep introspection. What hmm. makes sense in my life? What doesn't make sense? What is bothering me? How do I manage? Uh, because running away is not a solution, right? right? So. Yeah. Then when I did that introspection, I spoke to a lot of people. I mean, fortunately, I got help also hmm. to make better decision. Right. So the way I made decision is I started defining what is sport to me hmm. and what does sport give. Right. So for me, sport was just pure joy, hmm. uh, pure enjoyment yeah. and being happy. Yeah. Happiness comes from being fit, not just physically, but also hmm. mentally. Hmm. Right. So when I understood this, uh, I also understood these are the elements which is taking a hit for not being able to do it uh, effectively. Hmm. It's just not money. It's just not time over there, right? Hmm. Because you're just not executing it and you're not attributing that execution result to this primary elements, which is hmm. your happiness, your joy, uh, your commitment, uh, this. Right. So then I said, can I unlock this through one sport mm. then the answer came yes now which is this sport mm. which is easier to manage which is less time consuming uh, which is which requires less money obviously priority in that uh, I mean uh, the sport which stood out was running for me because yeah. it's less demanding uh, easier to manage even if you are on the move, you can go and get your run done. All you have to yeah. carry is a pair of shoes. Shoe, yeah. and irrespective of uh, which city, which country you are in, which time zone you are in, you can still run. Yeah. You can still manage even with your busiest life, be it on personal front or uh, the professional front. Right. And also, that gives you high actually, mm. right? Because at the end of the day, it's all about high we derive through a sport. Right. And this sport also keeps you as fit as the triathlon sport. Yeah. You can achieve everything through one sport. Mm. Then the question came, why not to try it? Yeah. Because if I try this, I can give my priority to my family. I can give my priority to my profession because mm. this sport is not paying me money. Right. So we all need money to survive. Yeah, we are and doing just for the love of it. Absolutely. Yeah. So mm. that love should always remain for the sport. Yeah. But there should be a very clear distinguish between life and your passion yeah. because passion is always good when it's pursued at limits yeah. not taking to an extreme thing at a cost of somebody else's suffering yeah. so i think these are the questions which will which really help me to address mm. since then to now i'm very consistent and regular at running mm. uh, except the cases here and there where i would miss mm. i would still get similar kind of high while i'm running yeah uh, I would, uh, uh, I would prioritize. I would plan and execute uh, my running sport the way I used to do triathlon, yeah. and this is keeping me happy. So yeah, nice. there's always an element of missing the core sport, uh, what you used to love or mm. what used to give you identity. Mm. Having said that, I think it's manageable with one sport. You you. You know, you evolve over time, right? Absolutely. You change over time. Yeah. You, and your priorities change over yeah. time. Like I was mentioning, the stage of life, yeah. right? At different stages of life, you would be looking at different things and uh, prioritizing different things. Yeah. And that is that is the way, that is just life, yeah. right? Example, if you have to create an analogy here, let's look at uh, adult life. Hmm. Your life as a student is different versus your life as a profession. Right. Then when you're working, 
to when you're stepping into a marriage or family life and that life changer mm-hmm. when you step into parenthood that life changer and as you pass through every stages in life your priority keeps changing yeah and and each of this stage in life will keep giving you a different high and happiness yeah definitely yeah right definitely. so i think uh, that's what happens in sport also yeah all said and done there's no regret in yeah, every yeah, decision obvi- you ob- make obviously you know you uh, you know you started focusing just on running and uh, deriving the same yeah. joy that you had for sport for triathlon uh, but having made that decision to just focus on running how did you were running change how did your running improve uh, because obviously your energy is not diverted from yeah. uh, you know or rather focused uh, on just one sport uh, and your volume would be more and your speeds would be uh, more uh, i would imagine then yeah. so how did that uh, progress so i mean uh, in my case what triathlon did is it just put my endurance at peak mm. the endurance is something you would need for your running especially if you want to become better at marathon yeah. that means a strongest side on my side which is lying is endurance i yeah. picked it and i carried it yeah. second thing is the way like i mentioned the way you plan and execute remains same yeah. meaning uh, this really helped me to adapt to running very quickly that means uh, you have to plan your day and uh, be happy with one sport mm. and achieve your results through one sport All right, right? Yeah. so when you do that you will have goal around it for me when i was doing triathlon i always wanted to do a sub 3 hour marathon mm. so that i could never do it because uh, running requires its own focus running would require its own uh, uh, way of training and nutrition and uh, planning right mm. so which i couldn't manage it while i was a triathlon so i know a lot of people still manage and nail it mm. but that's not so me because i couldn't yeah. nail it yeah. then that really helped me to reprioritize mm. the moment i stopped triathlon i picked a goal saying that i'm going to chase sub 3 mm. so which i could do it within 18 months window of oh. giving up my triathlon okay how how what was uh, uh you were marathon time before that so before that i was hovering around uh, 305 to 310 while i was doing a uh, full just, ironman just just marathon just marathon or part of uh, ironman not part of ironman part right. of ironman i i told you i did about 3 or 50 minutes Correct. but uh, a stand alone marathon i was hovering around at uh, 305 uh, to 30 310 310 so okay maneuvering from there to sub 3 was at least in my case it was impossible because i'm trying to juggle three different sport and manage hmm. but just that became far more easier the moment i picked one sport and prioritized right. that's one and then i further went into introspection mode what is not helping me to achieve goal hmm. one of the missing element there was having a mentor or a coach hmm. i picked it immediately for my running so i went to pani sir and said that i am going to train under you mm. for next 3 to 4 months and my only goal is to do sub 3 i don't have any other goal mm. so i did that very regularly for 4 months that result happened in a span of 4 months because nice. without a mentor for one year mm. i was struggling between 3 i've done all timing from 3 hours to 317 meaning th- i have a timing of 301 302 303 304 305 <laughs> till 317 wow. but i could never get that 259 which which was my goal uh, but that mentor or a coach really changed helped me to achieve it like that obviously right. that came through a process of adopting to good better lifestyle mm. uh, having a good diet mm. uh, having consistency in your training approach being mm. disciplined right. uh, having good uh, a uh, stressless life mm. i would not say stress free life mm. right <laughs> obviously, so obviously <laughs> you know if you are stress free yeah. I, i would ask you what is the secret yeah. <laughs> but you know i there would be a long queue be, uh, behind you asking yeah. you know <laughs> how how 
can you be stress free but uh, yeah that that is uh, very important to kind of have that mentor you know yeah. bring in structure uh, which you already have a lot of it but having that uh, having someone else look at it guide you yeah. makes a huge difference so and also another thing what really changed me when you have a mentor you'll start training with a group hmm. uh training in a group will also help you because if you look at the nature of triathlon it's largely individual sport mm. you are in your own zone in your own thought process you you will define your way wherein if you marathon also is also in a way it's a individual sports but when you train at least you'll train with group of people right, right. so when you train with group of people you'll go through a different learning process mm. uh there are people who will uh, support you during your ups and downs uh people who will push you during your training that'll help you to unlock different achievements so that's one of the thing that really changed and helped me is training with the group because again that gave me a different perspective so that accelerated my goal unlocking process mm, mm. definitely definitely so you uh, what was your first uh, sub 3 and how many sub 3s have you kind of done? i've done only one sub 3 the mm. so i did in 2 hour 54 minutes that 54? was 54 yeah no no not 59 <laughs> <laughs> so 2 hour 54 minutes that mm. was in delhi hmm so which year was this i think this was in 2018 18 so that also helped me to qualify for boston marathon mm mm-hmm. so mm. and did you go to boston uh, unfortunately i had a, a boston entry i was supposed to go covid mm. happened so ah, ha, ha, ha. so okay. on the covid year uh, i could carry forward to next year also mm. so because boston marathon they gave they they deferred the entry to the next year mm. but then there were uh, travel restriction because Correct. we couldn't travel freely yeah. yeah although i had a visa with me mm. so then i had to abandon the plan of uh, traveling to boston and doing the race right. now i have to go through requalification process Correct, so correct, correct. if i have yeah. to look at requalification process my fitness is not up there mm. where i can go and do again sub 3 because that's my qualification timing mm. so i think i have to go through a restart the process okay yeah restart the process so right now uh, where where is where is your fitness level at what currently again uh, it all boils down to priority for me the first priority is to get my uh, education degree right i'm focusing because that is very rigorous in nature it would right. keep me up uh, in the middle of the night doing my assignment and preparing for examination mm. so ju- that's just not helping me to go and do a long run or interval run mm. so the way i am prioritizing is i have to remain fit i don't want to gain weight mm. yet i don't want to be too stressful because uh, imagine you are up till 3 in the morning or yeah. uh sleeping late night and yeah. you can't just wake up and do training even yeah. if you manage to do it it's not healthy yeah so then i said uh, let me do a short run so i would wake up and do 10 to 12 km run regularly mm. that keeps me uh, a fit 3 4 days a yeah. week or i do 5 to 6 days a week so a couple of days break nice and yeah. uh, in between i would uh, start strength training and again i would give up mm. but again uh, that yeah. requires focus right. consistency that's yeah. something i lack so mm. i want to keep this going mm. uh, now from here on i'll start picking one or two race in a year again in running i don't want to do full marathon till the time i complete my education mm. so that's something i promised myself because it's a lot of suffer yeah not yeah. worth it at this point of time no no as we are talking about its stages of life yeah. and the priorities yeah. uh, you know accordingly right so right now your priority is getting through iim and you know completing your education yeah. and uh, you know there is a long life ahead of you so that's there, there are more things uh, that Absolutely. you can achieve right yeah so that is uh, you know your fr- your journey has been really 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 fascinating right and you have from the from your very very humble beginnings you have uh, grown as a person and you know achieved so much and uh, was it during one of these um, uh, you know 
events and then traveling uh, that you met your sponsor uh, uh, when was it from us my sponsors up? they are from canada canada so. okay you you actually went and met them yeah. right so how did they uh, you know they feel uh, when the guy they supported has turned into an inspiring young man like you so i asked the same question how did they feel when i met them so because uh, when they started uh, uh, my education sponsorship i was in my first grade mm. meaning i was barely fourth of, of, of i was at a four year of higher world kid and they supported me till i was 21 mm. so and they have never seen my face except the photographs which we used to send every year mm. and we would exchange letters mm. so uh so after my education as well i kept in touch with them mm-hmm. so when when i told them i'm doing triathlon i'm traveling to so and they they followed my life all throughout right from my education through correspondence to, yeah, the, yeah through uh, my career and uh, uh, passion so they followed me all throughout then they proposed a plan that uh, this happened very accidentally mm-hmm. so i kept in touch with my sponsor through her daughter Mm. because my sponsor uh, i mean uh, when she died she was 99 year old she passed away last year mm. uh, but uh, i always stayed in touch with her from her 70s till she died uh, i mean passed away mm. through her daughter mm. i would uh, talk to her tell what's happening in my life understand what's happening in their life and tell them i'm traveling to us so when i told them i'm traveling to us to do my iron man so this was during 2015 iron man louisville time right I gave them my itinerary plan that I am going to come for the race uh, and I'm going to spend some time exploratory exploring the country. So then they said that they're going to fly down to US and this is going to be my sponsor's last foreign trip because she can no longer travel because of her age restriction. Right. She was almost I think 88 or I don't know 90 she was yeah, at 90, 90. and yeah. she is not allowed to travel. Yeah. So they made last effort to travel to us met me in person the moment i met them i'm like i'm not meeting unknown people they right. are my family yeah. uh, extended yeah. family living in different country right so all the f- yeah. meeting for the first time but yeah. you have been uh, you know uh, on a journey with them absolutely uh, all through life yeah and they also hosted me in their hotel for a couple of days where i spend time just talking to them from morning till night you would eat uh, eat food uh, and talk and sleep that's mm. all we didn't even explore any part mm. so we would just do restaurant hopping but uh, when when we continued speaking i always had questions for them at every point of time one mm. of the primary question is like why me and why sponsoring kids forget why me also mm. why sponsoring kids whom you don't know mm. so what i learned is my sponsor uh she was a teacher mm. throughout her career and she was a believer a believer in christianity mm. and she is a firm believer in giving back to the society mm. so her husband passed away at very early age she remained single even after losing her husband mm. uh because that's what they believe in mm. and she saw her happiness in supporting kids who are in need and i learned that it was just not me she also supported 50 plus kids in different continent and different countries these are the kids who wow. are shattered with poverty mm. and i also learned that she has not met any single kid except me up until that point wow then the next question i threw them is what makes you believe that uh, uh, that your funds are going in the right hand and kids are becoming successful mm. so her answer really changed my perspective because she said it's not about success or failure of the kid whom you're supporting it's always mm. about being there for the person when they need you mm. and this being there for a person need not be being there physically or financially right that emotional also yeah i think Uh, that's one thing and also she also mentioned that uh it 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 made her realize that her effort has not gone in vain after seeing me because this is what gives her hope that people are 
genuinely getting help through, through her. her. Yeah. It's just not through her because like her, there are yeah. community out there who has been helping people Correct. who are in need. Yeah. That means people like us, mm. when we show what we have achieved, how far have we come in our life, mm. that gives them hope. This mm. hope will make them believe to support the community Even more and more. more. Yeah. So that's the legacy now she has left to her daughter. Now mm. that her daughter is continuing to do the same process. Right. right. And she has left that same legacy in me that mm. I continue to do what she believes in. So mm. we pick kids and I still support the kids. Yeah, yeah. Amazing, man. Amazing. So the, uh, you know, your journey is uh, kind of reiterated her uh, belief, uh, her faith uh, in, you know, the mission that she was after yeah. to help others, right? And uh, you, you, through your uh, journey you know through your whatever successes you had uh, over a period of time coming from that humble background you also give uh, hope to people who you know uh, who have very limited uh, resources but can you know achieve you True. Know, they, that hope that they also can achieve yeah right so that is really really good right? see the way i see it is as long as you have desire to do it mm. i'm sure there are people who will back you yeah it could be your family members friends or acquaintance somebody will back you mm. at any part of your life actually right so primarily every human being i think mm. we should we have, have desire. that desire yeah. to do well yeah to better ourselves yeah. to you know move towards a better future yeah definitely definitely uh, this is a fascinating conversation uh, nagraj to kind of conclude this session what are some of the tips that you would give working athletes uh, to do well in you know sport and uh, life work life i mean i'm i'm too small to give advice but i would rather share the mistake i do mm. what others should not be doing is uh one is we since we all manage too many things in our life we should find that balance mm. extreme of either on your left hand end or right hand end is not good right. being in in a midway which always make everyone happy around you which is one primary thing which i realized very late so that's very important because i know athletes it always a mind game right mm. if you don't do it it will shatter you mm. so have finding that balance is one key element out there mm. second thing is being consistent at it is very important because even till date the consistency is something we all struggle actually yeah. and for me it's even more a big struggle because this is real right mm. so but the way you should do it is when the struggle is increasing just go and do the thing mm. for one next day right Be- because the moment you do it the one next day will give you hope for for hope for the next day right so the the next day after next day will continue so yeah. you should keep believing in and be consistent at it yeah then third thing is when you when you always doing all this just remember people around you and always give it back to people so mm. this is something we should never forget because we no matter how selfish we are whatever it is we should always give it back to people it could be your friends family members or people who are in need for help so this mm. is third thing which i always firmly believe in then when you are in struggling a phase of life or constantly uh boggled with thoughts or confusion in life always seek help have a mentor actually that really helps reach out for help absolutely yeah. be, be it in life or sports let's take sports as an example when you're struggling to be at it uh, achieve your goal mm. the first person you should be going out to is your mentor or a coach yeah. not to you somebody else because yeah. you will get rubbish knowledge if you go to other person yeah. right a yeah. mentor or a coach will always give you better thing yeah. the same thing applies in life also when you're struggling in life Mm. go to a mentor and ask help mm. we should not have that fear of judgmental because yeah. nobody is going to judge people yeah. have 
uh, less memory in today's world right, right. so we should be very open mm. open we should be open about our conversation with a person mm. I, i mean of course it comes with uh, you should speak to a person where there's a lot of faith and trust in the person mm. talk about it and uh, we sh- we all should erase that fear of failure in life yeah. because today if you ask me that's the fear we all uh, sit at because uh, it's also especially because athletes will always get this high by winning that's how athletes are made right mm. because but if you look at life it's not always about winning mm. so uh, if you don't win it's it's the way we see it is it's failure right yeah. so but that's not how it is so right. we should kick this fear of failure in our life mm. and enjoy the process yeah so definitely. these are the few key things which i always keep reminding myself saying yeah. that this is what life is all about yeah definitely definitely all all very very valid points that yeah. we all need to remind ourselves constantly yeah. thank you nagraj it's been a fabulous uh, conversation thank you for uh, taking the time out and spending the time with the working athlete podcast thank you for the opportunity venki my pleasure that was my conversation with nagraj harsha i hope you enjoyed that if you are enjoying these podcasts and find them useful please consider subscribing to the channels on your podcasting app and as well as the youtube channel it really helps Thanks again for your continuous support. See you next week with another guest.